but I did not know what beautiful was until I got into this industry that dictated what beauty was. Mm -hmm. And then that's when it was like a whole new world for me. And I moved to New York at 17. I had modeled all through high school and I traveled, I traveled the world. And even when I got home from Paris a lot of time, my mom would still be like, you have to mow the lawn, Ashley. Like, <laughs> this is how I was raised. I was like very humble. She's like, I don't care how much money you just made. It doesn't matter. You still have to babysit your sister. So I was like, okay, great. Well, thanks mom. Everybody in Paris loved me. <laughs> it was interesting because it was like two different parallels of what beauty is. At home, uh, my mom raised me to believe in myself and that my exterior had nothing to do with my worth. And, um, and she raised my sisters the exact same way. She never looked at herself and degraded herself in front of the mirror, never said she needed to go on a diet. She was very strong and adamant about those things. And that kindness was the, was the most beautiful thing that you could wear. And then I'm in this world that is only based off of your exterior, that is about your worth with your hip, your size to hip measurement, with how beautiful your hair is, what your eye shape is. You know, you, you don't, you're not supposed to have a voice as a model. There's so many, it was just very strange strange to me. So I knew who I was from my mother and, and my, my father growing up, but then I had to conform to an industry that I wanted to fit into. The reason I think I wanted to fit into it because it was a whole new world. It was like tasting a new piece of candy. People offered, you know, obscene amounts of money. They offered you to to feel like you were in. They offered you the opportunity to um, to be cool. And those are things that I had never felt afforded. And now it's like, oh, do I want those things? What do I have to do to get in? And you you start to see yourself. Um, kind of make changes in your own belief system to fit into an idea or an ideal that was set that doesn't need to be. And that's exactly what happened. It was, it was just kind of this like messy spiral downfall where I had to catch myself really quick before I fell into it. That's so powerful though, that you had this incredible upbringing. Like, Thank I God I that. did. Yeah, like your relationship with your mother and just how she spoke to you about beauty and your family and I think that that's so unique and rare today as well, mm -hmm. because I know a lot of people would actually say, actually, because of the way I was raised, that's where a lot of my insecurities come from. I know because as opposed to their strengths. I talk to a lot of moms and I always tell them, like, how are you speaking about yourself in front of your kids? Oh, wow. Because that's how your your kid is going to actually think of themselves because they know they're a product of you. Yes. Whether they're adopted or whether they are actually physically yours, there is no way that they're going to look at themselves any differently. And I've seen it in all spectrums with mothers that have said, have never said anything bad to their parent or to their kid, but have talked very badly about themselves and you see the product of the child and um, you know and I've, I've met people who their parents have talked really poorly to them and they're some of the most confident people so yeah it can go either way it yeah. really can